Coming up on Mountain News this morning, derby goers are warned to watch out for signs of human trafficking. And after being believed to be a safe alternative to smoking, many are now speaking out against vaping. Plus, we speak to a local Holocaust survivor. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. The time is just about 530. Let's check in with Brandon Robinson for a look at a beautiful, at least for the first part of the day ahead. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The forecast is going to shape up pretty nice as we head to the first part of your morning, maybe through mid lunchtime and then afternoon. But after that, we'll see those clouds start to gradually increase and the rain chances pick up at least in scattered form tonight. Let's take a look at this morning. Currently, though, outside the WMT studio is pretty quiet as we head to the first part of your day. UVA wise, a clear night across the region. You can see those stars going back and forth in the sky there for a little while. Maybe a little bit of light cloud cover this morning. I'm kind of uh, seeing some of that there on satellite and radar, but overall, not a bad start today. A little cool in some locations. Valleys in those 40s this morning, ridges in the 50s. Some of those getting close to 60 there, like Jackson at 57, Prestonsburg and Pikeville at 56. Seeing the day planner, temperatures will climb very quickly, getting into the 80s by later today. Full forecast in just a few minutes. Connor. All right, thanks, Brandon. We are now less than a month away from Kentucky's May primary. There are several big state races on the ballot, including the race for governor. Eight men are in the race, four Republicans and four Democrats. Here's a look at who's running in the Democratic primary. Attorney General Andy Bashir, House Minority Leader Rodkey Atkins, former State Auditor Adam Edlin, and Joff Young. Hillary Thornton talked with some of the candidates as they prepare for Election Day. Working together, our current government says it's my way or the highway. Back in July, Attorney General Andy Bashir formally launching his campaign. I believe we can and must be better. And House Minority Leader Rocky Adkins announcing his intentions in November. For all those who believe that with work, tomorrow ought to be better than today. Former State Auditor Adam Edlin throwing his name in the ring in January. All keeping full schedules, hoping their messages are heard. The Attorney General's main points, health care for all, standing up for teachers, and his running list of lawsuits involving the current governor. Voters out there are desperate to beat Matt Bevan, and I have a record for doing it. But the others believe they are the best candidate for that task. Adkins running on his record of leadership with decades of experience in the General Assembly and relationships that he says will allow bipartisan efforts. You know, I'm a moderate, middle of the road, common sense candidate in this race, and I think people are looking for consistency that they've seen in me. Despite jumping in late to a race already headlined by two recognizable names, Edlin says his momentum is great, vowing to create opportunities for all and to modernize Kentucky, giving Kentuckians a fighting chance in a changing economy. In this environment, people are so hungry for something new and different. I think we're the campaign that is the most new and is the most different. Now in Frankfurt, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. During the last governor's primary in 2015, voter turnout was only 30%. On the Republican side of the ballot, Governor Matt Bevin is facing a challenger from State Representative Robert Goforth, William Woods, and Ike Lawrence. And Attorney General Andy Bashir is urging everyone in Louisville to be aware and look for the signs of human trafficking this derby season. Bashir says it is no fault of the derby, but just a fact. Human traffickers target large-scale sporting events to prey on victims and profit from the crime. Victims of human trafficking are coerced into submission by their abuser through immoral means, including forced dependence on drugs, violence, threats, and manipulation. Victims are also the mo often the most marginalized in our society, victims of abuse and violence, runaways, refugees, and immigrants. They are the lost, the lonely, and the left behind. But that's exactly who my faith tells me that we are supposed to serve. Anyone who believes they've seen exploitation or commercial sex work are encouraged to call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 888-373-7888 or just text 233-733. Once billed as a safe alternative to e-cigarettes, the Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky is launching a new campaign aimed at showing the dangers of vaping. 
Foundation President Ben Chandler presented their I Just Didn't Know campaign. Its goal, protecting teens from the potential dangers of electronic cigarettes. They believe teens are being targeted by e-cig companies. It's not an accident that flavors like watermelon and slush uh, are there. The Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky hopes to get the campaign into schools statewide. And speaking of vaping, Senator Mitch McConnell exp expressed his disapproval of the practice while visiting Owensboro on Monday. The other problem we have is vaping. It's very uh, prevalent now in high schools and even in some middle schools. And raising the age will make it more difficult for these kids to get a hold of these nicotine device uh, products. This comes a day after the announcement of a bill seeking to raise the minimum age to purchase nicotine products up to 21. And last month, while in Nashville covering the SEC tournament, Amber Philpott was given the opportunity to sit down with Aaron Calipari, Coach John Calipari's oldest daughter. She may have a recognizable last name, but she is making her own mark on the world of science and holding her own court at Vanderbilt with her research on drug addiction and the brain. Having a father like John Calipari, who has always been in the coaching spotlight, it should come as no surprise his daughter, Dr. Erin Calipari, has learned a lot from the game and her dad. Her sport now isn't basketball, but rather science, where she's the head coach and her court is this lab. His sports are very similar, right? You have a team of people working together to get to for a common goal. Inside the Vanderbilt Center for Addiction Research, you'll find Kella Perry leading her team of scientists and researchers. The game plan here in the lab that bears her name isn't about winning, but rather understanding the brain and how it works. So our question is really how does experience with drugs or drug exposure change the way that that animals use information to kind of guide decision making. And with the opioid crisis at an all-time high, Calipari's research at the very basic level looks to find why people become addicted and looks to underscore it as a disease. It's kind of multifaceted, right? We want to understand the brain so we can try to improve treatment outcomes and also, you know, communicate with the public so they understand kind of where this disorder is coming from and what factors really underlie vulnerability. The assistant professor in the Department of Pharmacology at Vanderbilt didn't start out in drug addiction research at first. And I actually started as an endocrinologist, so I was really excited about hormonal function and hormonal regulation of behavior. And then I ended up in a lab that was doing drug addiction work, and I realized that it kind of merged my interests with a major public health problem that was really underfunded and understudied. Her focus is now on women and addiction and how hormonal changes can make them more prone to getting hooked on drugs. Women transition to addiction faster, they take more drug, they have more problems with abstinence, they're more likely to relapse. And so what we're really trying to understand is why that happens. What factors make women or females particularly vulnerable to the addictive properties of drugs? Calipari says science has always clicked for when other subjects didn't. Away from the lab, she is quite outspoken in the social media world, especially when it comes to her dad and UK basketball. Yeah, see, like in the last like 10 seconds, I've gotten eight notifications. She admits having the Calipari name and social media gives her an outlet to expose others to science. And so this gives me a platform to kind of communicate who I am to people, but also communicate to pu the public in a way that lets me really bring attention to this really important disease and in a way that I wouldn't be able to otherwise. Her last name may be synonymous in Kentucky for basketball, but it's the name Erin Calipari is making for herself here at Vandy with the work she's doing that might be the real game changer when it comes to beating addiction. Calipari got her undergrad at UMass, her PhD at Wake Forest, and then did her postdoctoral training at Icon School of Medicine. Fun fact, she did play basketball in college, but admits she wasn't very good. And a new primary care clinic opened Monday here in the mountains. The facility at Pikeville Medical Center added four new positions to the hospital, plus two new physicians. CEO Donovan Blackburn says he's thankful to help provide more opportunities for the community. Because it's not just about the doctor, it's also about the clerk that's sitting at the counter, the receptionist, the person that's, that's taking the order. Um, I mean, it goes on and on. 
The clinic has 12 exam rooms. The new primary care clinic was part of Pikeville Medical Center's big announcements back in November, along with a children's hospital, multiple other clinics, and a coffee shop. Last week, the Environmental Protection Agency closed most of the remaining loopholes regarding asbestos. Now, asbestos has been partially banned in the U.S. for decades due to links to mesothelioma, which causes around 3,000 deaths per year. According to the Center for Disease Control, last week the EPA announced a nearly complete ban on asbestos manufacturing and production and reviewing the remaining instances where asbestos is used. And a local Holocaust survivor has had an amazing life and is still very active. John Rosenberg survived the Holocaust and has lived in Prestonsburg with his wife for decades. After coming to America, he served in the Air Force and later became a lawyer. He helped fight for civil rights and has recently helped former clients of Eric C. Kahn. The 87-year-old also serves as a board member for the East Kentucky Leadership Foundation and says he has hope for the future of Appalachia. But I've been really pleased with what we've been able to do, and of course we've got the conference coming up. Right. Why do you think conferences like these are important? Oh, I think it's, they're important because they give everybody a chance to uh, put in their two cents worth and to see what kind of exciting projects are going on in Kentucky. You can get to the full one-hour interview with Rosenberg from last night on it issues and answers on WYMT.com. Straight ahead on Mountain News this morning, we look at a local high school's effort to clean up eastern Kentucky. If you like warm weather, this afternoon is going to be your cup of tea or coffee, whichever you prefer. I'll have the full extended forecast in about three minutes.